bromate ion plus five bromide ion plus six hydrogen ion forms three molecules of bromine plus three molecules of water. Three reactants. Our rate law is going to have three things in there. Okay. We want to determine the order of each reactant. We want to determine the overall order. And we want to determine the rate constant. That's our task. Okay. So let's write it down. Determine the order of each reactant. The overall order and rate constant. Okay. Well, here's our experimental data. Well, let's go ahead and write the rate law first, the general. So the rate is equal to some constant k. It's going to be that raised to m power, br minus raised to n power, h plus raised to s power. This is the general form. We're going to find m and s, and we're going to find k based on the following data. So we have four experiments. Let's see. Experiment BRO3 minus BR minus H plus and initial rate. All right. Experiment one, two, three, four. 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.10. Initial rate is 8 times 10 to the negative 4. 0 0.20, 0 0.10, 0 0.10. 0 .10. Notice I've only changed one thing, in this case, the concentration of the bromate. Bromate, bromide, hydrogen ion. We get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3. That's interesting. Okay. 0 0.20, 0 0.20, 0 0.10. This time from here to here, we've changed the bromide. We end up with 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3. And the fourth one, 0 0.10, 0 0.10. 0 0.20, we've gone back, Zero point. that's the same, that's the same, that's what's different. We end up with 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so in order to find M, which goes with the bromate ion, I'm going to use experiments 1 and 2, because bromate changes from experiment 1 to 2. So... Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and write it out without writing absolutely everything. So, rate 1 divided by rate 2 equals 8 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 equals, well, the rate is equal to that whole expression is equal to k times, and now I'm going to stop using brackets, I'm just going to use parentheses, but I do mean concentrations. Um, concentration, 0 0.1 to the m, 0 0.1 to the n, 0 0.1 to the s, over k times 0 0.2 to the m, 0 0.1 to the n, 0 0.1 to the s. We have a whole bunch of cancellations. The only thing that doesn't cancel is this. So this number is equal to 1 half equals 1 half to the m power. That implies that m equals 1. Therefore, the bromate power is one. We're done with that. Now let's compare rate 2 and rate 3. In other words, experiment 2 and experiment 3. Rate 2 divided by rate 3 
equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 over 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3 equals k times 0.2 to the m, 0.1 to the n, 0.1 to the s, over k times 0.2 to the m, 0.2 to the n, 0.1 to the s. Cancel, 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 cancel. We end up with 1 half equals 1 half, this time to the n power, which implies that n equals 1. Well, n equals 1, that is the bromide ion concentration. So bromide is also order 1. Okay, now we'll go rate 1 compared to rate 4. Rate 1 is 8 times 10 to the negative 7. Is that right? So you times 10 to the negative 4, not negative 7. 8 times 10 to the negative 4. I was going to say, that's a little bit too much. 8 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by 3.2 times 10 to the negative 3 equals k times 0 0.10 to the m, 0 0.10 to the n, 0 0.10 to the s over k times 0 0.10 to the m, 0 0.10 to the n, not s yet, 0 to the n, Whew. symbols everywhere, 0.2 to the s, cancel, 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 we end up with 1 fourth equals 1 half to the s power. Well, 1 half raised to what power gives me 1 fourth? That implies that s equals 2. So the hydrogen ion concentration has an order of 2. So there we have it. We have our rate, which is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and use one of them as a symbol, minus delta BRO3 minus over delta T, just a symbol, is equal to some constant K. BRO3 minus to the first power, BR minus to the first power, H plus to the second power. This is our differential rate law. Uh, you can just that. This is just a symbol that says the rate is. The rate of depletion of bromate is equal to some constant times this, this, this squared. That's what's going on. Now I take any one of the experiments, I put the values of the experiments in for that one, that one, that one, and I have the rate because I calculated the rate. It's part of the data, and I solve for k. So I'm going to go ahead and take, uh, well, let's just take experiment one. It's not a problem. Okay, so I get 8.0 times 10 to the negative 4 equals k times 0 0.10 times, uh, that's the bromate concentration. The bromide concentration is 0 0.10, and this other one is 0 0.10 squared. When I solve for k, I get 8. In this particular case, it is liters cubed over moles cubed second. And again, uh, the, the unit doesn't really tell you all that much. It just tells you what's going on up here. But the num real, this number is what's important. So the order of bromate is 1. The order of bromide is 1. The order of hydrogen ion is 2. The overall order is 1 plus 1 plus 2. The overall order is 4. The rate constant is 8. OK? So that's the method of initial rates. You write down equals constant K times the particular species raised to and so on. It's usually not going to be more than two or three. I think three is about the most that you're really going to get as far as reactants are concerned. And then you take the data that's been collected. Experiment one has initial concentrations for each of the reactants and a measured rate. You compare the rate of one with the rate of the other by putting in values based on this equation, just like we did. 
to derive those numbers. Once you have the orders, you use them plus one of the experimental values, concentration, concentration, rate, to find K. And now you have your final differential rate law. So in this particular case, we get the rate is equal to 8 times that, that, that. The rate of the reaction. Now I can plug in any concentration I want and randomly, okay, 0 0.2, 6, 19, whatever. And based on this that I derived from experiment, I can tell you what the rate of the reaction is going to be, how fast it's going to be. Okay.